think we're live. It's always hard to tell. It's the first like couple seconds. It's always awkward. <laughs> Gotta wait for them uh, to show up and let me start chatting and stuff. There we go. Yep, we're live, man. All right, uh, let's give everybody a couple seconds to get here, and um, I'll get started. Let me they're see busy, if I. They're busy, they're busy watching the market go up. That is true. It's a really bad time to start going live. Everybody's busy watching the uh, candles. Everybody's watching those charts right now. All right. All right. Well, uh, hey, everybody. Thank you for uh, stopping by. Not another uh, Bitcoin interview with uh, my man here, Greg Grant. Craig Grant, <laughs> I can't believe you uh, made the time to come on my channel, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, I know you don't need an introduction, but if you could, please introduce yourself, tell everybody who you are, and maybe a little bit about how you got into Bitcoin and what you do in this space. Well, my name is Craig Grant, and I first encountered Bitcoin when it was $3. I was already pretty wealthy, so I didn't care to... Um, I was on um, what you call BitTorrent, you know, like BitTorrent and they accept donations in Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. So I checked it out, like, oh, this is cool, digital money. And I was like, I want to get some of this, but then I had to send money to like some crazy country. So I was like, nah, I'm not gonna mess with that. And then uh, eventually, now 2015, December 2015, I discovered, oh, there's Coinbase, I can buy it. And I was actually, I watched a Roger Ver video, and he was all hype about it, so I, I looked into it. And then that's when I started buying. I bought my first at 480, and then it went down from there. Which I knew was going to go down, though. So I even made videos about that. Like, yeah, I bought it for 80. I see it going too low, but I'll be buying on the way down. Then I was buying until our, you know, until Ether came around. <laughs> so, um, so uh, basically, I uh, just wanted to see, like, well, what what do you do in this space? Like, tell everybody, like, what you do. So I make YouTube videos and speak my mind about whatever I whatever is going on on that day or. Uh, within that 24 hour period that I'm making the video. Dude, your that's videos are on point. point. Yeah, I know everybody yeah. already watched it already knows, but if they didn't, now they do. Like your videos are on point, man. Well, yeah, well I don't have any I'm not doing anything else cuz you know, I'm, I haven't been working in since forever, <laughs> since like 1999 I haven't had a job, so I have time to even see what's going on. So then therefore if I make a video Whatever I say is going to reflect just the information that I gathered, and I have the time to do it. So, you know, that's probably why it comes out that way. Yeah, that's true. Keeping up with everything going on in the space is like a full time job. Like, I I try to trade, but I can only do it if I have two days off in a row. Like, I work my day job. I can't trade. Like, you got to be in the know all day. And it's just all, it all depends on if you're only focused on one thing. Because like like last year. For a while, the first six months, I was mostly focused on Ether. So I was always in the Ethereum Reddit. And um, pretty much that's it. I was trading Ether for six months. And then after that, I moved into Steam. And I was always just focused on Steam. So it's like, I'm always focused. And then the Bitcoin's always there too. So I'm not like too spread out into a whole bunch of different things. So because I'm focused on just a certain thing and I'm focused on it, then the information I can have about it is pretty, it's going to be on point. That's what I wanted to talk to you about was uh, Steemit. Like, how did you come across Steemit? And, um, like, what about it got you to stick around? Okay, so I was on CoinMarketCap in about May of last year. And I saw Steemit come up into the top 10. So I looked at it and I was like, oh, blogging platform. I joined it up. And um, I blogged about the DAO. Because at the time, the DAO was out. So I was, like, promoting the DAO. And I was, I saw the trending page, like there's all this money, like, you know, 20 G's, 30 G's. I'm like, yo, there's a lot of money flying around here. But I, I made a blog post, didn't get any money on it. You know, I just moved on. And then I was watching a video um, and, the, and the, the, there was an interview between two, um, two YouTubers. They were talking about how the first payout from the rewards will happen on July 4th, on Independence Day. So it was like June. I was like, okay, I have an account. Let me go start blogging right now. So I can get some of that money from the first payout because they were saying, Oh, this is gonna be a million dollars paid out. And I'm like, I want a piece of that, <laughs> you know. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I started blogging and yeah, I made some money from that point on. And actually I haven't I've blogged every day since then. Yeah, I've uh, checked out your Steam It and I recommend everybody watching do the same. You are you know very informative. 
and it's uh, always relevant, like you said, I guess within the 24 hours. So uh, you know, if you're trying to stay in the loop, guys, create a Steemit account and follow my man here. It's uh, His Steemit is amazing. I wanted to ask you a little bit about Steemit because I'm very new to it. Obviously, the price increase is what basically caught my attention to it. I saw it when it was at like 10 cents. I checked out Steemit. I created an account, never used it. But then the price boom just happened. I went and take a, took another look at it. And um, Trevon James actually turned me on to busy.org, which made Steemit a little bit more user friendly for me. So now I'm probably going to be there a lot more. Um, do you prefer Steemit or do you prefer like the busy.org overlay? Um, which one do you prefer? Well, just from using them both, I definitely prefer Steemit because busy is um, not as, it looks better for browsing it, for looking at stuff. But when you're talking about posting or um, actually using it, like you try to, like I tried to send a transaction with the wallet, it didn't go through. So busy is is not um, completely ready yet. Still, it's still beta, beta, beta. You know, a beta on like a beta, the, yeah. Yeah, beta on a beta. So, but so the usability, no, it's not there. But the way it looks, the idea behind, you know, the the better look is is there. Uh, Whereas Steemit, no, Steemit, I would say the functionality is great. Um, they're not going for a, a look really. And they say, you know, the developers on Siemens say it's never going to come out of beta. It's not going to um, be improved in any kind of way other than functionality. And what they're looking for is other um, applications to just pull the information from the blockchain, um, other outside of Steemit, in which there are a couple now. There's actually one that just came out, which is a forum, forum style version, um, just like any reg regular forum, but it's a Steemit content, Steam content. So it's, it's like everything that's on Steemit, but it's in a forum format. I like that. So it's, it goes more into the uh, Reddit like um, ecosystem that people are more familiar with. Well, um, forum like um, you know the classic like Reddit is not like a forum, but like like forum like the Dash forum, for instance. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Like that forum. Um, what was one of your most successful Steemit posts, and uh, why do you think it was so successful? Like, uh, if somebody was just getting into it, how would they go about trying to make a successful Steemit post? Um, no, that's okay. A successful Steemit post. Now, I would say the easiest way to get a successful Steemit post is the introduce me post. You know, when you introduce yourself, and um, if you're if you do that well, then yeah, that can be successful. But as far as consistently successful, there's no formula to that. You know, um, yeah, there is. There really is no formula now. There is tricks like you you can go to Steemit chat. And start parlaying and you know getting getting yourself known in there, but even nowadays that doesn't work. So I would say there's no formula to a successful Steemit post other than if you're on there long enough, and um, you know you're just you're just known to be a great blogger. I mean, after that, you just have to establish yourself. You know, as far as being on there, commenting, um, posting good content will get you there, but it's not going to happen like you know just. Like you have to pretty much prove yourself. If you like blogging, if you enjoy it, then you'll be you'll be successful on it. But if you're just getting on there just to make money, uh, I don't know. You're not you're gonna get frustrated pretty fast. You know, if it's I, just for money and, and it's, it's not gonna work out. Yeah, I've had but people like, um, come back like, saying like, "Hey, what's going on? I ain't make everybody's making eighty bucks a, a post. I ain't getting any money. What's what am I doing wrong?" And they're asking me, and I'm like, "Hey, I I'm not the pro, so yeah, it's, it's obviously like, it's." Just, Keep posting. I was posting for months and earning like four four times a day, earning less than a dollar per post, and I still enjoyed it. You know, I was getting comments and everything, but I wasn't getting um, you know, upvotes from any anybody with a lot of steam power because you know my content is just I'm just straight up doing it. I'm not even trying to please anybody or anything. I'm gonna say what I want to say, and like um, until now, there was a lot of you know, of course that was steam was criticized for that. A lot of control over all the power, you know. And who control the power and they want to see things a certain way and they're going to support this person and that person i just pretty much ignored all that stuff we just kept buying i was in it really to for the trading aspect of it like buying the steam power because last year there was a huge inflation rate 160 percent inflation rate so i was just buying steam power to get that extra steam and at the same time blogging if i earn blogging not if i earn blogging good if i didn't whatever i'm still buying the steam power so you know the steam power inflation rate is what really kept me there 
Okay, cool, cool. That's what I was going to ask next. Um, could you do me a favor and you know briefly just explain the difference between uh, Steam, the token, and the Steam dollar, and um, how they are usually confused between one another, and like how you can differentiate the two easily? All right. So, if one Steam is worth ten cents, then ten Steam is worth one Steam dollar, right? So it's like nailed it. Yeah, yeah. they use the Steam to. Um, to value to they use the value of steam to represent one steam dollar. So like if, if one steam is worth 20 cents, then five steam is worth one steam dollar. So when you have a steam dollar, it's always worth a dollar um, until you convert it. So if you if you say pay 10 steam for one steam dollar and then the price of steam goes up and then you sell that, let's say it goes to 20 cents and you sell that steam dollar, then you're gonna get back five steam. Okay. Right? Okay. So you pretty much just lost five steam by holding on to steam dollars, but it works both ways. The price of steam goes down, and you and you sell it, and you you can get a, if they say it goes to one cent, you can sell it and get a hundred steam. And you only pay ten for it, so it's just like U.S. dollar and Bitcoin. You know, you're trading U.S. dollar and Bitcoin, but I, the steam I dollar really works. Like that's that's perfect. Yeah, it is perfect. Yeah, everything about steam. Once you get to know what it is and how it works, it's pretty much well thought out and really perfect. Perfect is a good way to describe it. Yeah. Well, where do you see Steam it going in the future? Do you see like you know the high school kids who are using Instagram and you know or whatever coming on, or where do you see like Steam it going? Um, you know, due to the way the the market looks now, you know, I don't see I don't see where I've Steam needs to go anywhere big. To um for whoever is involved in it right now to earn tons and tons of money, right? Like for instance, right now there's um, six thousand active user users within um, close here. within twenty four hours, right? And if you say sixty thousand, that's you know if you do that times ten, which is sixty thousand users, you can pretty much multiply the price of Steam by ten to say it's going to be twelve dollars, right? But you know at twelve dollars Steam, you know my upvote is worth a hundred bucks, you know. And like my Steam account is worth, you know, one point something million. And then there's there's Steam accounts that'd be worth almost a billion. So it's like because of the way the cryptocurrency market is set up, and because blockchains don't care about dollar values, you know, if you're if you're in a if Steam it was ran by a group of people basically, and they see all this money flying around on there, they're gonna say, Oh, that's too much, you know, we're gonna take some of this and put it over here, because you can't have um blog posts being paid out for a million bucks. That's wrong, you know, you know, that's how it is. But when you have a blockchain, Blockchain doesn't care. It's going to just do what it does. And in whatever the dollar value is, is what it is. And human beings just have to deal with that. Right? Yeah, man. Yes. I, I like Steam. I mean, I, I don't know. I put a couple posts up there and I really like the their governance system or however you want to call it. Like, they're like, you know, the if you upvote first and you know you re-steam you curate, then somebody behind you does the same and it's incentivized that, behind incentive. That's changing in a, in a, to a certain extent with the next hard fork, which they announced today. Whereas, yeah, the curation part, if you're not blogging at all, the curation part becomes important to, to say that, well, if, if, you put, if I'm not blogging, I'm going to curate, and that's all I'm going to do. And you post a blog post, if I upvote you after one minute, right, I'm giving away all my rewards to you, which that's okay. So let's say my upvote is worth five bucks. I'm going to give you that five bucks after one minute. After 15 minutes, I'm going to give you, what is it, um, 50% of my reward, right? So uh, you'll get 250 and I'll get to keep 250 But the And so the further down I go, you um, get less, right, and I get more. But then it's like um, there's a competition between all the curators. So curation, right, is hard to explain, like, on video. But if you were to, like, if you were a curator and you read out how it works, it's like a really gamified system to say, to vote at the right time but you can't vote too early or too late right so i figured out my own that 22 minutes is the right place to vote if you're going to curate but if you're a blogger that doesn't matter you know it's like none of that matters exclusive knowledge really, bombs yeah blogging is like real money you know curation in fact they say that 75 percent goes to the author and 25 percent goes to the curator but because of the gamified system it ends up being that about 15 percent actually goes to the curators because they have to game for that 25%. And by doing that, they give away um, some of that to the author, you know? So curation is, yeah, it's, it's, it's there, if, especially if you're gonna use a bot to do it and you're not even gonna bother doing it, then you can just buy a whole bunch of steam power, 
set up your bot and walk away, you come back and you'll have earnings from that. But, uh, you know, that's the least you can get out of Steam. You know, the most is when you just blog, you blog and then you do everything. You create and you have your Steam power. You, can, you um, post comments. It's like if somebody, if somebody dedicate themselves to just be on Steam and that's what they're going to do, they can make a lot of money. Yeah, I, uh, that's what I like about Steam. The more you contribute to it, the more you bring it value, the more value you get out of it. Like, I really sure. enjoy that about Steam. It keeps, it almost keeps out the spam. Like, there are people there that are going to troll and be spam, but it's very deterrent and it's going to cost you. Yeah. I mean, they call it an attention economy. So, the more attention you give it is the more you, more you earn, basically. You know? Yeah, the, the only thing that scares me is trolls are getting a lot of attention lately. So let's hope that doesn't continue a trend in this team. It. Um, no, I don't really see them. You know. Yeah, I don't. That's why I like it. I mean, I was I've been going there for content recently, just to just find content about today's events, and it's just so like I don't know. There's it's just filtered for like the best stuff. Yeah, because I mean, if you're if you're gonna, this is like this a troll type of person. It's a waste of time to even bother to do that on there. I don't know. It's like. You're gonna get downvoted. It's just gonna disappear. It's like there's no point in, in controlling on the Steam, it, you know, because um, they, they're gonna catch on to it right away. And just you press a button, and then whatever you have to say just kind of disappears. You know, other, other people can see it, but they have to go dig for it. And then as a trolling type of person, you might feel like, oh, this is wasting my time. I'll go back troll on you. Well, since like I could say you basically like work on Steam, like that's a good source of income for you. Um, do you see any like you know worries in their future, like something that may be a concern that you see coming into their future, like uh, scaling or something to that effect? No, no. I mean, you could ask me that um, maybe a few months ago, and I probably would have said something. But now, now they're up there, but all sorted out now. I mean, the biggest deal for Steam it was when Dan, the main developer, when he left. That was like the sweet. That was sweet because it was like a huge weight got lifted. You know, because Dan, man, the guy who created the Steam blockchain, he's very, very um, smart. He's very overpowering in a way because he's so damn intelligent. So it's like, you know, when he was there, he felt like, man, you have, you felt like you're in presence of someone like that was just too powerful. <laughs> it's too powerful. So once he walked away, it was just like a breath of fresh air. And that's that's actually a week later is when this price of steam just took off and it just never stopped going up from there. Wow, that that's crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it was that, it was what was needed for him to for him to step back. Yeah, sometimes yeah, you gotta walk away and let your baby grow up, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, and they have good developers, so it's not like he was really doing anything anyway, but just being there, you know. And so and now he's moved on to something better, so that's good. Something better? Oh man, I can't wait to see what yeah, that he's, is. He's doing, he's doing uh, they they premiered it yesterday. He's doing a smart contract platform that is you know better than Ethereum, obviously, because I'm not going to do one that's not better than Ethereum. Right, you know? right, right. Yeah, we're we're doing this thing like this thing, but it's not not going to be as good. Um, all right, let's uh, segue from uh, Steam it into um, BitConnect because uh, other than being the ambassador for Steam it, um, you know, you you talk a lot about BitConnect. And yeah. um, I know absolutely zero about it. I was going to look into it before this, but I thought I'd give you a fresh pair of ears, man. Like, I've heard about it, but I never checked it out on my own. So, yeah, like, in, uh, why, what, what is BitConnect and how did you get into it? Uh, so, I was on Coin Market Cap maybe a couple months ago. No, yeah, about two months ago. And I saw BitConnect there um, right next to Pivx, right? I was looking for something to invest in. So, I was like, BitConnect, what's this? So, I looked at it and I mean, you know, when I saw what it was doing with the blockchain and everything, I was like, this this is brilliant. And in fact, what really made me um, interested was the referral program. Because I've never seen like a cryptocurrency thing with a referral program built in. There's never, right? So I was like, okay, this is great. So first thing, I, I got excited about the loans, right? Because then you put a $100 loan, you get your interest. I'm not explaining to you in detail now, you know, because... I'm not well, I, I've loaned, I've loaned on like Poloniex and stuff like that. Yeah. So, if, so for instance, you could put a hundred dollar loan and the loan is loaned out to a, a trading bot, you know, trading bots that trade for Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin is volatile, the, the bot trades and earns profit. And then the profit it earns is paid out as interest. So the average is about 1%, right? So you earn like, if you put a hundred dollars, you can earn a dollar a day. Um, that's a fair percentage considering that it's a trading bot, right? And sometimes it goes down though. Sometimes it's like 0.01%. If the bot doesn't make any trades that day or doesn't make any profit that day, 
but on the on the average over a seven day period is about one percent. So that was interesting. I did a hundred dollar loan, and then I saw there's a referral program. Okay, great referral program. So I promoted it, right? Not even looking into it, right? And I came back to my account like a couple of hours later, and I was like a thousand dollars in there. I'm like, yo, what's up? Yeah. What's up? So I like I checked it out even more, and I'm like, man, this thing is brilliant. The way they have it set up. It's like everything was well thought through. It was it's very similar to Steemit in a way. Whereas when you dig deep into Steemit and or Steam blockchain really and Steemit, you see how whoever made it just like thought about every little thing, like every little detail, and made sure that everything was perfect before they put it out. And so this is the same thing with BitConnect. Like everything was well thought through, well um, presented, and it was just like the only word I could say was brilliant, and I just kept promoting it. And I made like. You know, I'm still making tons of money with it, man. Like a lot. Is, <laughs> a lot. is it from the uh, loaning aspect or the well, referral yeah, program well, aspect? The, the loaning aspect is is I could say yes because listen, the mo I earn a lot from referrals, but the referrals wouldn't work if the loans weren't profitable, right? Because like you know, in cryptos, crypt crypto people are not dumb, right? And someone with a thousand dollars is not a stupid person, especially if you have a thousand dollars worth of cryptocurrency. You have to be certain kind of intelligent to have it, that, yeah, right? it requires a certain level so, of intelligence to acquire it yeah right so if you get on bitconnect and you have your thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars with the crypto and you check it out and you see what it's all about and you're willing to put up your cryptocurrency and say okay yeah this is this is for real i'm gonna do this then and just like i did i did it you know so it got me to do it and i don't know i'm not i don't think i'm just a stupid person so so then every time they do it i earn a seven percent commission so if they lend a thousand dollars out what i went or 70 bucks Right, and if they do ten thousand, I earn seven hundred dollars. I've gotten a couple of those. So, and you know, and then there's, there's a downline too. So if like I refer you and you refer someone, then I get three percent of that. You get seven percent. I get three percent. So they have this whole um, referral program set up. It automatically promote Bitcoin. But what this does is create buyers, right? And then who whoever's earning money are the sellers, right? So all the money going in and out of Bitcoin goes through their trading platform, whereas I'm the buyer, you're the seller. I'm buying your tokens for Bitcoin, or you're selling me your tokens for Bitcoin. There is nobody controlling the money other than the users themselves who are putting loans or cashing out or buying loans. So everything goes through the blockchain. It's a blockchain. You can mine it, you can take it. You know, um, they, I even went to the um, Bitcoin talk where they announced themselves, and there was like 64 pages on the forum of them dealing with BitConnect and talking about the mining and the, so I mean I made sure that everything was there as like a real so so you know there's there's people who come out oh this is a scam but they didn't go to the Bitcoin talk pages on all the forums to see all these miners talking about mining it and staking it and it's all positive it's all everybody's in there actually doing work you know and developers and everything but they're just gonna look at it from face value I mean, just because there was a referral program and you know I'm earning tons of money with it oh no 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 so I say, hey, you know, give it a year. In a year, I'll be banking and you'll come around, basically. Kind of like how Genesis Mining and Steemit. Steemit got the same shit when Steemit came out. Oh, it's a scam. This is impossible. You know, no, I remember. You're not, um, no, you're not wrong. That's my first impression of Steemit. When I first found Steemit because of the curator reward and the, but like, hey, if I like it first and someone likes it behind it and that whole, like, everybody wins and it feels like a scam thing made me feel bad like why is that why is that my mentality why do i feel like everybody can't because, win um because of the the, the, the it's, everyone's accustomed to the traditional system like there's a guy up top and he's going to run the show which in blockchain it's not like that in bitcoin it's not like that you can get a miner you set up your miner you mine the coins that's money you know that's money there's nobody is going to stop you from doing that you know, so it's all about how much miners can you have. You can set up a warehouse, you can mine it. Nobody's gonna get between you and the money. You know, you can mine it unless you have a problem with the electricity company. But it's just you get the electricity, you put the miners, you mine the coins, that's it. Same thing with Steenet. You get on the blog, you blog, you blah blah blog. Nobody's gonna stand between you and the money. It's there, you know, it comes off. So so like that's how blockchain technology works. There's no middleman, right? So then if there's no middleman, then who the hell is scamming you? Nobody's scamming you. You know, you just you're just involved in something that you're not accustomed to because it's you might think, oh, this is too easy or it's too good to be true. But that's the way blockchain technology works, man. You put in an effort and you get something out.
That is or you lose some money and you get some out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and speaking of case, money and effort, man, what about trading? Yo, uh, I just watched one of your most recent videos. I think you said you're taking a break from it and you're just uh, trading, collecting. Trading, you can't trade in this market, especially in this market. You know, right it's now, like, yeah, I took a break. I'm sitting it out, and I, I thought that was a you know when you said it, I was like, yo, if I'm on the same thought level as this man, I'm on the right goddamn track. Like, because I was thinking the same thing as you were talking throughout that whole video. I was like nodding my head, like yup, yup, like a bobblehead, man, but. Explain to some of the people maybe why it was a trader's market and why now it's a spectator's game. You see, you know, a trader's market is when you know that, right, um, that, okay, today Bitcoin's in the green and the alts are in the red, right? Yep. And then most likely that's going to last about two days and then you, everything's going to flip around. That's the trader's market. It's not like that anymore. It's not like you can't time it anymore. You just don't know. Sometimes everything is in the red. Sometimes, it, like right now, everything is in the green. Like Bitcoin's going up and everything else is going up with it. So it's like um, the trader's market is where you can um, predict, kind of predict where things are going to end up. Um, and yeah, you can't trade this market. The cryptocurrency is too popular now. Yeah, it's, it's buying like on a, the way up. Just keep buying yeah, and holding. Like a, it's, just, it's coming to seem like there's a bottleneck of like people trying to get in, <laughs> trying to get in. And, you know, they got to go through Coinbase and all these and, and all these different, you know, to get into crypto is not an easy thing. You know, it's not like one, two, three and you got it. You know what I mean? So there's I feel like I get the sense that there's a bottleneck buildup of all these people trying to get in. And they're slowly as they slowly get their accounts approved and this approved and they get money. And then, you know, it's like it's just going to keep building up. And it, that bottleneck is like having the line inside a club. You know, you pass the club, see the long ass line. Oh, this shit is jumping. <laughs> this shit is jumping. But you, you know, you want to get in. So that's going to last quite a while, I think. What do you think is one of the altcoins right now that's going to disappoint everybody? Like it's popping right now, but it's going to disappoint everybody. Like what, what, what altcoin do you think people are running to and they shouldn't? Because everything, like I said, everything's green, man. But not everything is long-term profitable. I think Ripple. It's really probably, uh, my yeah. baby yo my baby no, no ripple because the guy has so much you can't have a situation where one guy has control of that many of the coins that's a that's a that's a situation you know you're waiting for a problem right there you know so and then he comes out and says he's gonna lock them he's gonna lock them up right yeah you're gonna why don't, you, why don't you just do that shit and then come on and say it? well i've already so here's the smart contracts everything's locked up you guys don't have to worry you know i'll have it done by the end of the year that doesn't sound right to me so I'm not saying there's a guarantee that that there could be a problem, but if there is a if there is going to be a problem somewhere, I think Ripple is the is the one, the one that most likely will show a problem because you know when you have one human being with that much going on, yeah, that's the problem. You know, I like that answer. I, I don't like the answer, but I like the answer. <laughs> yeah, I used to say that about Ethereum, but I don't even think that anymore. I think even if Vitalik had an issue, it was, Ethereum would still be able to continue. If not, so, Ethereum Classic will just pick up right in its, right in its you know, steps. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, and that's the same. That's the same thing. That's like the same thing. You know? Yeah, exactly. It's the same thing, yeah. but in some opinions, a lot stronger in code. So, there's that. I mean, right now, I think it's over $13, dude, for Classic. You need to have, um, I don't know. They, they don't have any applications going on it, though. So it's they like, got a couple of developers, and they're talking. But you're right. That's It's just talking a couple of developers. Yeah, me, you know, I'm beyond all the speculating, man. I mean, I, I like Steam because it's oh, it's a real thing. I don't have to speculate about it. You know, like BitConnect is a real thing. I don't have to speculate about it. Um, Dash is getting there you know, to a certain extent. You know, once they have the evolution, they have to have, you know, something other than just a speculative coin mm -hmm. or even a debit card. You know, what I, I mean? know, that, man, I've been waiting on that forever. So even that alone will set them one step higher you know what i mean as right. far as um, to say it's not a speculative thing so but once the whole the speculative thing like even like ripple for instance saying all these things with the banks and i don't know the story seems so good but the way the coin trades doesn't match the story for some reason yeah, I'm you with you, yeah yeah i think it's a gamble within a gamble like uh when i when I, people are like oh why are you buying ripple i'm like well I'm hoping the banks ain't wrong. I mean, they've been, they've been wrong in the past. The banks have messed up a lot in the past. They could mess up now, but I'm hoping they don't. And I'm hoping that they do adopt some kind of blockchain technology and maybe it won't last for long. Maybe they'll move on, but this will get their toes wet. And 
I don't know. I'm just uh I want them I want them to adopt this technology in any way, shape, or form. And that will get them, you know, one step closer to maybe being a decentralized bank, like something like Coinbase or something like that replacing Wells Fargo. Yeah, and the only bank I've really heard doing any major moves was JP Morgan JP Morgan. That's with know. Zcash, right? Yeah, Zcash, but they've they've also been involved before with, you know, Ethereum and I don't know, it's like JP Morgan doesn't have a good reputation as far as like, you know gonna trust this bank right so right right yeah but like you know i don't know bank of america should do something i mean they say bank of america is with ripple but i don't you know right yeah, it's I, hard I, it's hard to believe any of that news honestly it's hard to believe any of that stuff <laughs> yeah, it's so. not like any of the bank ceos are going on twitter like yeah we just hashtag twitter ripple yup we did that yeah, yeah exactly it's, it's not like that so once something like that happens that's going to be tr um significant I should have asked this before the last one, but I was curious, where do you get your information when you trade? Like, um, where would you go to get your information? Like you said, you have all day to accumulate YouTube it. YouTube is the only place I would think I would get it. Or on Steam it. All right, so who's your favorite YouTuber besides yourself and why? Favorite YouTuber, hmm. Yeah, don't be worried about hurting no one's feelings. No, 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 I'm trying to think about this. It changes, you know. I don't know, like um I don't have one actually. <laughs> I don't have one. I used to I would have said crypto before, like crypto from crypto's news, but I don't, I don't like this stuff no more. His style changed. He's just blur blur blur, yeah. man. He yeah, used to be know. a lot more in depth. Better. I don't know. It's not it's not good anymore. And um, you know, like I would say, I can't say Trayvon because I can go without. I can go on without watching his videos. It's not like I have to watch it. So when you have a favorite, it's like you don't want to miss. You know, you don't want to miss their video. Yep. I don't have one of those. I would just say, you know what? I like Brit VR's videos for some reason. I like his. Um, I like his way of being. They put it that way. Okay. <laughs> makes me laugh. So he gets all. And first, I watched a video today with him getting all hype about burst. Um, you know, some casino. And it was just like, yo, this cat, this cat is entertaining, because <laughs> you know, he was so hyped for for I would think no reason, but you know, he, he was really yeah, hyped for no reason. That's what people like see me like talking about Bitcoin. Like you're so hyped for no reason. Yeah. So if I was gonna say, I would say he's my favorite right now. For VR. He's been a favorite for a while, actually. All right, guys, make sure you check him out. Um, you know, that's where the man gets his info from, and that's when it. I don't get it. Oh, oh no, I don't get it. Well, it's I get one it. of your videos. Yeah, yeah. VR is notorious. Well, where do you go to get your info though? Like that you relay besides like YouTube and stuff. Like, um, is there a form or uh, anybody particular on Steemit that supplies some good, you know, info? No, there isn't. You know, let me think about what the last time I got some info. So the last time I got some info was. All right. So the J.P. Morgan thing. Where did I hear about that at? I guess, you know, info comes in from different, different, you know, I'm online, right? So I might read a comment or I might, I'm in a chat and I see someone say something in a chat because we have a group chat, right? Yeah, or, that's what I was going to say. So info you know, just comes to you now at this yeah, point. Yeah, it just comes from different directions. There is no place that I go to seek it out because I'm not really, a, I don't really seek information. It just, it's there. And I don't, I don't know, I haven't been trading. I don't really, tra and you know, another thing, I don't trade on information. I just trade on the, just the numbers, you know, I don't need information to trade. I go right. so the opposite. Yeah, I guess I'm the opposite, man. I'm reading blogs. I'm re I'm in Slack channels. I'm 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 going way too far, way oh, too deep. No, you know, that's not necessary. I mean, when trading is just the numbers. Like for instance, I was the last time I was trading a lot. I was using Exodus Wallet, and I just you know balance everything out. Like if you have 33 percent of each thing, let's say you're doing three things. You set them at thirty three percent each. One thing goes up, you know, to forty or forty five. You sell it. Or something that you know you just keep them balanced out i did the same thing on poloniex where i have like five different coins and i have them all equal equally divided and then one when one moves up i sell it for the one that's down and you pretty much just trade like that on the numbers and then you know you do that for a few days and you end up with a lot more crypto than you started out with but you know i need to get an exodus wallet because I, I was doing that with jacks when i first got into crypto i saw i could use shapeshift and i was doing it with ether and ether classic where i just had some ether classic and when it went up sold it for ether when Ether yeah. went up, sold it for Classic. And I literally yeah. did that ride to earn 10 Ether and 10 Classic in about a week and a half to two weeks, just using Shapeshift and Jax. So like, I need to get on that wallet. I really That's do. That's a good way to trade. That's a, Just trade on the numbers. There's no need to get information. Yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. There's two ways to go, but sometimes the information will mislead your ass. You know, I've done that before where you're like talking, reading, talking to people on Slack channels and you know, blogs, reading blogs and forums, and then the, the news never becomes news. It's always still the rumor.
Yeah. The information is too kind of time consuming too. I was doing that with Ethereum though when I was trading Ethereum. But it, you know, no, it's, it doesn't matter. If it's going up, it's going up. You know, when you trade, you definitely take losses. But with crypto, you, if you're doing it long enough, you always end up with more gains. And then you ask yourself, damn, did, did, did I get these gains from the rise or did I really trade, you know? Mm -hmm. Right? So, I mean, so me, I look at to say if I end up with more of the coin, you know, if I'm trading, then I have to end up with more of the coin, not necessarily a higher dollar value. Because a higher dollar value doesn't mean more of the coin. So, so when I stop trading, I don't care about how much coin I have. I just care about the dollar value. And I think that's a better way. I, I like that flow better than to care about how much of coin I have. I'd rather just pay attention to the dollar value. I say, well, if I have 100,000 steam and steam is this amount, if it goes up 10, 10, 10 cents, I earn 10 Gs, I'm working with that, you know? Yep, yeah, that's, than, that's a much cleaner mentality to it, for yeah. sure. It keeps it less foggy. Yeah. Um, I was just, I guess it's, pro I already know, I guess everyone knows the answer to this, but um, what's your favorite altcoin, like for holding besides Bitcoin? I like like so, long term dashed. I like dash. I mean, I, I can't call. I mean, you might you might think I might say steam, but I can't really call steam an altcoin. Um, there's, there's so much more than altcoin. You know, what I mean, it's like a utility. Use it. It actually has a lot of functionality to it. I think the uh, term altcoin is going to uh, wither away, man, because of the applications. These alternative coins. It's it's going to become alt blockchain soon or something like that. If you have to speculate on it, it's definitely an altcoin. You have to speculate on it, you know. I mean, if, if you don't, it, basically, yeah. And then most of them, that's what you have to do. You, I mean, what are you doing? You speculate. Even Ethereum is wholly speculative because it doesn't really work yet. You know, it's just, it's just barely there, right? So, yeah, it's it. I think it's crazy what Ethereum's doing now. It's like you said, it's it's barely there, and it's got like ten barely there projects built on top of a barely there project. So these these ten barely there projects are contributing to it really yeah, I big. Might have, I might have switched from Ripple to Ether. How you say, how you say it? Because you know, there's so much riding on them getting it to proof of stake, and then that, which is, I think they'll be able to do that. But if you, if you ever looked at the sharding thing, like they wouldn't. Yes, I know. I I've, I've I've read it and heard enough about it that it scares the shit out of me for holding it. But I am long term. I'll be honest. I have a, I have more, like way said, more in ether than I do in Bitcoin, and I'm keeping it there. Ether was at like five bucks for the whole time until they get all that stuff done. Then it's a good investment. But to not have any of that shit done, and then all this, the history of problems that they've had, and you know, it's like, oh man, come on. Why is the, why is the thing is like almost two hundred dollars now? Somebody said, I think they're just they just have a whole bunch of it. Someone, some group, I guess the Ethereum Foundation perhaps already has like a ton of it just sitting there, you know, to hold it up, to lock it up. So, and then they just go out and get all these corporations to invest. So, you know, to get in the Ethereum Alliance, I found out today you just paid three thousand dollars. Whoa. So are you there? I was reading. I was trying to get a bunch. Uh, yeah, a couple of questions in the uh, chat. People are blowing it up on us. Um, somebody wanted to know what you thought about uh, Blockstack token that's coming. Uh, do you know anything about that? About what? Um, it says Blockstack token. No, James no wanted way. to know if you knew about it. We just wanted to say that name on on, on the thing because obviously I don't know about anything that's coming. <laughs> I, don't know I don't know about anything. That is like that, you know. I don't do that kind of stuff. I don't do ICOs. I don't do um, what doesn't exist yet, uh, kind of stuff. So, um, I guess I do. You think like the Bitcoin price right now is, um, you know, sustainable? Do you think it's going to be keep going and yeah. steady, or do you see, do you see a, a, you know, Bitcoin coming down a little bit? The guy in demand can come down. There's yeah. not enough of it. Yeah, well, there's not enough of it. Plus, all the amount of Bitcoin that's been lost. You, know, you have to always think about how much Bitcoin is out there that just lost, you know, lost keys, lost this, lost that. There's a ton of it. I would say, I would want to say maybe 30% of all the Bitcoin is lost and you can never get to it. You know what I mean? And then there's all these, they said, I, I read one stat that there is like so much Bitcoin that is in like, you know, like very small amounts in wallets. So like you have a Bitcoin wallet somewhere with like 0. 0.000 something Bitcoin. Yeah. Just, yeah. Everybody does that. Right, so there's so many of that, so much of that. There's another um, Bitcoin that, so the supply is is not that much. And then as Bitcoin gets more popular, you have whole entire countries talking about it. You know, it's just like, there's a bottleneck to get Bitcoin. I mean, 
I would not be surprised if Bitcoin just shot up like a lot, a lot. I mean, if someone go, tries to go and buy a million dollars worth of Bitcoin right now, it would probably go to three thousand dollars real quick. Because that's one person that I heard one rich guy complain about that. He's like, man, I can't even buy a million dollars worth of Bitcoin. If I try to do that, the price goes up too high and I don't get a good deal anymore. So First world buy, problems. Wow. Yeah, you have to buy in a small amounts in order not to affect the price. So, so yeah, supply and demand says Bitcoin is going to definitely keep going up. That brought me to a question I didn't even know I had, man. Um, but what do you think about like something just like that, manipulating the market? Somebody like, you know, I know it ain't him, but somebody like Bill Gates decides to come in here, buy it all up out of the market and just dump it for a dollar the next day for fun. Like any crazy eccentric billionaire could potentially. All not right. Thank you. Possible. Can you explain why to my viewers that's not possible? Well, for one thing, um, the amount of money that you have to spend to get a certain amount to dump it. And then there's all these people ready, ready to buy, you know, there's all these people around. You see the price come down to a certain point. I mean, if Bitcoin went from right now to like a thousand dollars, it would be so hard for it to go any lower because of all the buying that would just support, all the buy support that would support it for it to go back up again, right? So that doesn't make any sense. You know, it doesn't make any sense for anybody to try to even do that. You know, Right, that's, it's that's more incentivized to join the party than ruin the party, right? Yeah, you'll be you know if you want to affect Bitcoin, you can you can attack the miner. You can do that. That's the way to do it. You know, you attack the mining, right? You go to wherever the mining's at, China or whatever, and you shut it down, or you do something. You know, that that's where you can attack Bitcoin. But as far as the market goes, no, not really. Hmm. I can dig that, man. I just people ask me all the time, like, what's stopping you know a billionaire from ruining that for everyone? I'm like, they're not. They're going to join the party and enjoy it with everyone. Yeah, if you're a billionaire, you're that smart. You're not, you're not going to be um, throwing away money. You don't get to be a billionaire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, dealing with money that way, right? I mean. Yeah, that's that's a silly. Like, I, I like to say it's a silly, like, doomsday but... thought. Um, yeah. Brings me to another question about scams and such. Have you ever been scammed? Um, have you ever been a part of one or maybe accidentally promoted one? No, but I see them. And, you know, for instance, the Kaiser is an obvious scam. Can but... you explain, please? Well, you, did you know Matizer? Did you no. know about the cloud mining Matizer? Yeah, it was a cloud mining thing that gave you 100 mega hash. It lasted about three months. It gave you 100 mega hash for free. And then you just, it was obvious that it was just, you know, a cloud mining scam. They didn't even mention that they were cloud mining. But, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, scams are pretty obvious when you see them. Um, there's a lot of them. I mean, kind of obvious to see a scam. So, yeah, they're there. I mean, when you when you check like when you're YouTube YouTube spam, there's a lot of those things in there. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't click on them, but you know if you go to your YouTube spam right now, you're spam and you'll see Bitcoin stuff in there. You know this that this that those stuff that stuff is all scams. I mean, they're not for real. You know, but when you're talking about a blockchain, you know basically if you if there's a blockchain involved and it's on coin market cap, then you're you're you're, you're almost not. It's almost not a scam. But then when you're talking about like some of these coins that are really cheap. You know, you're asking for trouble because you know if it's just a web page and a coin and there's nothing else and it's cheap and you're gonna buy, it, yeah, you know, you you can make some profit, but if you stay in that too long, you're gonna get hurt. Yeah, there's a lot of people in my inbox getting scammed left and right, and um, I, I'm a, I'm friends with a couple of YouTubers that like to out that stuff, so I just keep sending it their way. And he said it's 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 almost a pandemic right now because. Bitcoin's going through the same exact growing pains as the internet did. It keeps everyone keeps comparing it to that, and I like to compare the scam scenario that we're in to the same one with like the Nigerian prince with the email first Anybody came out. Anybody who gets scammed in crypto deserves to get scammed because you don't have to do anything but just buy some Bitcoin, and that's it. That's people it. get FOMO'd out though, man. People see people, you know, saying, "Hey, I bought this coin and held it and sold it," and you know they want to do the same thing. I that's what only reason I got into trading was because I saw people buying this. Holding it, selling it, trading. I was like, "Ooh, I gotta learn." I lost money learning, but um, that's that's. I feel like that's natural. That's how everybody should learn. Or, I mean, hopefully you you lose early and you don't end up losing later. Yeah, I stay away from all that stuff. I just stick to the um, you know, I started out with Bitcoin and I went into Ether, then I went into Steam. I mean, I generally don't get into anything that's like too low on the totem pole. You know, I, I mean, how many different cryptocurrencies are you holding? You know, you know, the only crypto that I've really bought that was really low is Burst, and that's a really good coin. Yeah, I, was, I actually just got my uh, coworker uh, mining burst because we were looking into it. Burst is dope. 
So, yeah, you know, and, and there you go. Another coin that has, you know, real use, real application can make people really happy. You know, it's not just speculate, um, right. all around, you know, so, I mean, obviously if I'm going to, if I'm going to get involved with something, there has to be some kind of something going on there beyond, you know, cause I've been, Hey, I've been online for a pre, like I said, I've been, I've been earning money online for 16 years. So crypto is just another venture for me. I've done a lot of shit. I've done everything actually. I've, done, I've made money with everything on the internet. A true entrepreneur. I've been involved in it. <laughs> I've been involved in it. I, when PayPal started, it was called X.com. And it was only X.com for maybe three or four months and they switched to PayPal. Hmm. And I made tons of money with it. How do and you. That was in 1999. That was, that was a long time ago. <laughs> How do you um how do you accumulate your coins? Like do you use an exchange or do you just, you know, how how do you get your coins that you want to hold and like where do you well, now I simply earn everything now? I mean last year I was buying though. Last year um I started out buying Bitcoin, then I bought Ether, but mostly traded Ether to get more. Spend a lot of money. Well I wouldn't say a lot, but I, what I did buy consistently for six months straight was I was buying it every single day because of the inflation rate, right? If I put in one steam, I'm gonna get back three. That was the idea, you know. So, and um, I didn't. The, the contract was a two-year contract, two years of inflation. But I said to myself, "There's no way. There's no way they're gonna be able to um, go two years like this, right?" So, and it lasted six months. And at six months, they stopped it, and I was like, "Yes, you know, look at my wallet, fat wallet." because I was buying the whole time while the inflation rate was going, you know, and then like, you know, a lot of people was cashing out and stuff, but I just kept buying and accumulating. So, and now I just earn, now I simply earn because I have Genesis Mining. So I earn with that and I earn with Steam and I earn, everything is all about earning now. I don't buy. Right. It's uh, a lot of people are preaching earn crypto. Don't, you know, buy crypto, earn it, don't buy it. You can, but you know, um, you still have to buy though. If you don't have any, I mean, definitely you should be buying. Right, but um, I mean, like work your way into the um, the system or in the space. Yeah, work like your way into the space to earn. It's a really great way to earn it, uh, and stuff like Bitcoin too. Even Steam, like all that stuff is great for earning. Man. Steam is the best one for earning, actually. I mean, especially if you're not, if you're not, you don't have to be in crypto. You don't have to be a crypto person. You just get on Steam and start. You should be a blogger, and then before you know it, you have. You, if you're a blogger for a month on Steam, it you're going to earn um, 0.1 BTC, you know, and you've never had Bitcoin before. You know, you're going to cash that steam out and you end up with 0.1 BTC and you're like, oh man, I have Bitcoin now. You didn't have to buy it. Dude, I love the way you talk about crypto. Is there like anybody in your family or close like that just refuses to believe that it's not a scam or anything like that? Like how many, like do you have any hard headed people in your close circle that still don't get it? Nobody in my life knows anything about what I do. And I like that. They just see that there's money on the screen. That's it. They don't know anything about it. I don't talk to anybody about it. There's no point. I mean, it's just the kind of people I live with, though. Everybody's just kind of free, you know, free, you know, doing their own thing. Freedom type people. There's no, um, like, my girlfriend, she's just she's just a straight hustler doing her hustles. My kids, they're just, you know, everybody's just, like, on their own hustle path, you know. Yeah. So, um, I'm doing this is my hustle. This is what I do. Nobody needs to talk to me about it. So somebody was wondering, speaking of the kids, they wanted to know if they got into cryptocurrencies and stuff like that. Um, they they get, like, the way my son is, he just gets paid. I mean, he's not even going to get into it because that's for him, that would be work. So for him, you know, his mentality is, it's just going to come to me, which that's how it is. I send him the money, he spends it. Um, he could get on and start learning about it, but it's no point. His pathway is for him to just get paid. That's it. I mean, he came into a world where I'm getting paid every day and I'm not doing anything. So his mentality is, well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get right. paid every day and I'm not going to do shit. And that's pretty much how it is for him. And I wouldn't say you don't out, do shit. You, you create valuable out. content, man. Don't say it. You don't. Well, no, no, I mean, me, I do. But like him, you know, he's just going to pay regardless, get paid regardless. He doesn't have to. That's his mentality. You know, I didn't have that mentality when I was a kid. And I was always like, oh, I'm going to work. And, you know, so it's all about your mentality. It's going to provide you the reality that, you see, you know, he doesn't even need me. Even now, if I'm not around, he's still going to have that reality. That's just the way he thinks. That's awesome, dude. I like that. Uh, I got a couple questions. Everyone's wondering who, uh, where'd you get those paintings and did you make them? Yeah, I bought this. I bought these from this, this cat um, from Colorado. 
And it's funny because he hit me up with a really dope painting a couple of a few days ago. He said he, you know, he's selling it. I bought it for a hundred dollars each, right? But he, I buy it like for a hundred, gonna give me one free. So I say I'll buy one, give me one free. So I said, uh, yeah, I'll buy it, but I'll I only pay you in Bitcoin. And I'm like, yo, this dude did not respond. No. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck, yo? I mean, why would you not respond? I figure, okay. If he, even if he doesn't have Bitcoin, he would go at least look at the chart. You know what I mean? And you look at the chart, you think, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but he didn't respond. I mean, he's really trying to sell his painting. He didn't respond. I'm like, yo, this is. That's why I, I, I made up a thing the other day. I said, um, cryptocurrency is for mentally insane people, right? That yep. you don't know we're mentally insane. Yeah, and we're like, either so crazy or we're just, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, regular people know it, but they're not allowed to tell us and shit. So it's like you try to bring it up with them, they go, oh. It's one of those, it's one of those, you're, you know, they're thinking in their back of it, oh, it's one of those guys. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, man. All right. Uh, I guess we're getting close on the end here. Um, is there any questions I should have asked? Like, was there anything you were expecting or anything you wanted to talk about? No. Now you think we got everything? We covered all the bases? Everything, everything, yeah. All right. Um, I guess I'll give everybody a second to throw some questions in down here. Uh, hey, guys, anybody have anything to ask? Go ahead. Let me see if there's anything lined up here. Yeah, I'm not going to ask you about any altcoin investments or white papers. There's a lot of those. I read white papers. He reads charts, people. Read the charts, the candles, red, green. I read the chart or I use the application, you know. It's like you got to use the application. You want to invest in a coin, you ask yourself, where's the application for me to use? And um, then I'll invest in the coin. There you go. But you're just going to invest in something that you believe in, and you're, getting, you're, you're, not, you're not being smart. You're going to lose, in fact. Oh, you know what's a good question? Um, who do you think is promoting scams right now in the uh, in our space? Like YouTuber or Steam it blogger? Any? Do you think that you've spotted somebody in particular? Like, they stay away. Yeah, from there, there's these. There's this whole TBC. You ever seen that? Story? Yes, I'm so done with that. Please cover that for well, me. Are you done with that? Did you even get involved in that? No, I clicked the link. I looked for five seconds, and I started blocking people as soon as I saw it in my my oh, messages. Yes. That's a that's a good that's a, that's that's an obvious 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 scam there. It's All like right. the legit you know, Nigerian scam. scam. Right. You know what? I don't want to say the word scam because theoretically, people could be making money there, and if the people are making money, no. um, you know, they're making money. You know, but the amount of work they got to put in is it's, it's that's the bad part. You know? I say this about so, scams: oh, just sorry. because it's profitable doesn't make it not a scam, and just because it's not a scam does not mean it will be profitable. Well, you know, but it's only it's only a scam when the thing shuts down and takes your money. And so as long as it's up and it's running and people are making money, you can't really call it a scam. It's just a bad, it's just not a great way to make money. Because if, if you have to put in a lot of work, then it's not a good, it's not a, on the internet, there shouldn't be, you shouldn't have to work hard unless you're having fun. Like, you know, if you're having fun blogging. But if, you, if you're on there and you're spamming people with your link and you're lying to them about this and that, then you're like, that's too much. You're doing too much. Like you said, yeah, we're in the age of digital reputation, quite literally. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't have that, a, good a good digital reason. reputation in this in this day and age, you're going to become blocked to the point where people don't see you. You know, you're going to have one friend and it's going to be Tom from MySpace because nobody likes him. Like, you're going to be beat if you keep contributing spam. So I think you're right. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to wrap this up with a pretty tough question. So take a second if you need to wrap yourself around it. But... Can you explain what cryptocurrencies are in 10 words or less? Cryptocurrency is financial freedom for the 1%. Wow, that's powerful, dude. I believe that too. I don't know if you uh, saw my interview before, but I believe, I really believe in that, man. You're right. That's that's deep. I don't even know how many words that was, but I don't know it was less than ten. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I I lost count because I fell into it. That's perfect. That's a bumper sticker, man. Um, 
all right so thanks and uh hey everybody thanks for watching live i appreciate all the thumbs up all the comments all the uh whack questions <laughs> and um please uh check out my man here check out his steam it uh go ahead and follow him there i'll have a bunch of links in the description box for all that and uh craig grant thank you so much for taking the time to come speak with me and um have a day thank you sir